yesterday we were talking about our basic aspiration end of the day what are we doing everything for and it's not difficult to see that we all want to be happy we all want to be prosperous and we want the continuity of that we also discussed what exactly is happiness so happiness is to be in a state of harmony and if you look at what is this harmony you will find that it is when what you really want to be and what you are is in alignment that is when all your or whatever you are thinking whatever you are feeling in the imagination that is in line with your natural acceptance when that happens you are in harmony you are in a state of happiness when it comes to prosperity if you have the feeling that you have more than you need you feel prosperous so more than the quantity of physical facility it has to do with the feeling so there could be billionaires and millionaires who still don't feel like sharing because they want to gather more and more they feel they don't have enough and there could be a person living in a hut who feel satisfied that they are getting one or two meals a day and then if there is a an orphan or somebody they see on the street they gladly share their food with them so more than the physical facility it has to do with the feeling of course it's not being said that physical facility is not important physical facility is important but we must see the priority of things how do we know we have enough physical facility and what do we need physical facility for because that is what is going to answer that question how much is enough so that clarity can come with the right understanding the understanding that physical facility is required only for the body when it comes to the self when it comes to being happy physical facility doesn't have much to do with it and we can see very clearly that there may be many many examples of people who have more than sufficient physical facility and yet don't seem to be that happy and why go to somebody else we can try to look for ourselves that if we look at the need of the body we may realize that we have sufficient more than sufficient for the need of the body yet are we happy and are we happy in continuity because that's what we are desiring that's what we want to be and if we are not that there is no harmony between the two there is no alignment between the two then mira das ji is saying saying that when we feel greedy we don't feel prosperous true because we think we don't have enough so we want more and more and more so this is our aspiration i think this is clear for all of us to see we may not be there yet that also may be easy to see so how to go about it what to do for it isn't it i think i'll share the screen from here so that i don't have to keep asking 
somebody else to keep changing. Um, so, since we aspire for the continuity of happiness and prosperity, and since we have been trying to get it through physical facility and looking outside, we discuss the sources of happiness that we are trying for. And we find it's not really working. We may be getting small amounts of pleasure or excitement now and then, but that's not sufficient. We always seem to need more. More because we are trying to get that happiness from outside, from a limited source, whereas our requirement is for continuity of happiness. So it doesn't work. And we may have seen with various examples that ultimately that continuity of happiness is not there. So to have this continuity of happiness in the self, and if you see the prosperity, the feeling of prosperity is also in the self. So when we have to work with the self, when we are looking to um, be happy within the self, we are looking to have this feeling of prosperity within the self, then we have to work on the self. And we have to work for ensuring the right understanding and right feeling within us. And with that, we can understand how much of physical facility is required. We can understand the purpose of the physical facility and then go about finding out how much is required because it's required in a limited quantity. And so we take care of all three things right understanding in the self, right feeling in the self, and we also take care of the required physical facility. That is what was being referred to as living in human consciousness. What we may have been doing earlier, at some point we may have realized and then we switched to trying to work towards happiness, but for a long time, we may have been trying to get this happiness from outside. And in that process, going after more and more physical facility. And that is referred to as animal consciousness. So this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness, that is possible through human education. After all, only when you start getting that information, then you start contemplating on it, and then you start um, trying to see it within yourself. Ultimately, it is about seeing it within myself. Because if somebody says something, it is not true for me unless I can see it myself. It can be a belief, I may believe it. But then that belief, because I have not seen it myself, there will always be a doubt. Is this really true? People are saying like this, but does it really work? And you can see from the questions that we are getting, if somebody is poor, how can they have feeling of prosperity? And so on. Those questions come because we have not been able to see it for ourselves and we have some doubt there. So if we want to see it for ourselves, we have to make effort to try to see within. We have been spending a lot of effort looking outside so far, we have not seen it. Now it is time to change the strategy and start looking within. So.
So what is being said is that the transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness can be ensured through human education and sanskar. If we have the right education, if we can get this even as information and we start exploring it within and trying to live by it, we can slowly change our sanskars and it can lead to this continuity of happiness. So this also may be a belief right now, but rather than believe or disbelieve, it might be better to just keep it as an open proposal and try it out and see if it works for you. So ultimately, this is what we want. We want all three, right understanding in the self, right feeling in the self, that means seeing our relationship with others and having sufficient physical facility. And we can see the priority, right understanding is top priority. Why is it top priority? Because only when we have understanding in the self can we understand relationships, can we understand our relatedness with others. Only when we have understanding within ourselves can we identify how much of physical facility is required by understanding what the purpose of the physical facility is. And so we can work on all three. and move from animal consciousness to human consciousness. That transformation is necessary. And that is what we are all working on. To move from that animal consciousness or what we refer to as the deluded self, when the self doesn't have that right understanding, doesn't see the relationship with others and shifting from there to having the right understanding and being able to see our relatedness with others. So we need to shift from being deluded to moving to the seat of the true self, the pure self or the higher self, whatever we want to call it. That shift has to happen. And many of us may be able to see that we are somewhere in the process. That shift is beginning to happen. And then we find that there are more and more moments that we are happy. So with this, we had... Uh, asked a question yesterday to reflect on. And that question was, how, what is the effort that we are making? Each one of us, we had to reflect on this. What is the effort I am making for this happiness and prosperity, for being happy and for having the feeling of prosperity? all the time. So ultimately, if we have right understanding within the self, that means we understand the harmony within ourselves, within the family, in the society, and we are able to see the harmony in nature and existence. Then we also understand our relationships with other human beings. And so we do justice in our relationships not just within our immediate family, but again in the larger family of human beings around. So in our neighborhood to begin with, or our relatives, and then further, you know, and so on, till we are able to see our relationship with the whole, all the human beings in the world, what we call the world family. So that possibility of having an undivided society 
can be there ultimately. I mean, that is the larger goal that we may be able to see. And similarly, our focus shifts from, you know, complaining about things and trying to get more and more through the nature and the physical facility. Rather than that, we start looking at our participation in the larger order. When it comes to nature also, we work towards our participation so that this physical facility that we are getting through the nature, we are able to help enrich nature also. We are able to see that, you know, our requirement of physical facility is limited. And when we have that, then we can not only share with others, but also make sure that we give back to the land to replenish it, to enrich it. Because that is how nature works, isn't it? So ultimately, that possibility of starting from within oneself and moving towards a universal human order with an undivided society. That is the big possibility out there, which is um, something that we can work to achieve. We may not be there right now, but certainly if it is desirable, we can make effort for it. But it all starts from within myself. So first and foremost, I have to work on understanding within myself, working towards human consciousness. And as this um, more and more selves have human consciousness or are living in human consciousness, then ultimately this possibility we may be able to see. So right now we may see many things are not so good in society. We see problems, right? We see so many assumptions are there. People assume money is everything, physical facility is everything. Just now we had one sharing regarding misuse of physical facility and so on. So many problems are there, no doubt in society today. And if you can see this in the, in the lower um, part that is displayed on your screen on the left side, this black area, you can see all the inhuman kind of things that are happening. But rather than focus on that, if you can see above, just above that, a picture of the self. Now within the cell, this yellow block where you see the activities within the cell. We'll do this in more detail later when we come to the cell. But just if we see at an individual level within the cell, then where this imagination is going on, the desire, thought, expectation, if this is not guided by the natural acceptance, then this is how it will be. We are largely focused outside. We are not looking within, isn't it? So this yellow block, which we often refer to as the B2 block, if it is unguided from the higher self, from the natural acceptance, from the pure self, then often this may be the case that we continue to be in animal consciousness and we contribute towards an inhumane kind of society. But once we start making that effort to transform, when we start progressing, then if you move up to the upper right corner of the screen, the yellow part, a humane society, 
a society where there can be right understanding and right feeling in every individual. So each individual can be happy. With that, they can also identify the need for physical facility and work towards acquiring that physical facility and be prosperous. So there can be prosperity in every family. With the prosperous family, then if all, pro if all families are prosperous, then nobody needs to snatch anything from anybody. The entire society, there can be fearlessness. There can be trust in the society because everybody has sufficient. They don't need to take from anybody else. And with that, one can look towards mutual fulfillment with nature and existence, to coexist with nature and existence. So all that possibility is there. And we may be able to see that when we work towards this kind of a goal, then one can have a society where all the families have this kind of a common goal. That possibility is there when we work on understanding on a large scale, especially when we work on understanding through bringing it in education so that this possibility is there for each and every child. And you can see with this, um, you can see in the upper right area, here the um, higher activities within the self, what we sometimes refer to as the B1 block, those activities have opened up. Opened up in the sense, we have become aware of them. And now we take guidance from there to guide our feelings, thoughts, expectations in line with our natural acceptance. This higher activity, the highest activity within us, that activity of realization, that point from where we can see and we can direct our feelings and thoughts and expectations in line with it. Ultimately, that possibility is there for each and every one of us. That potential is there. We just have to be able to uncover it, to be able to see it within us. So when we are at that point, if we stay aware and we are able to be at that point and see things directly, then we can make these choices consciously. Right now, many things we do unconsciously. Unconsciously in the sense, we are not aware of it. We are busy with the activities, but we don't know why we are doing. Or we are not sure. We are, you know, everybody is doing something, so we also do. We assume that that is the only way. But as we move towards this transformation, we can see perhaps the possibility of not only that personal transformation, but through this process of education, slowly that change, that transformation in society is also possible. Today, let us try to see, all day today we can reflect on this, how often are we complaining about things in the family, outside, in society, in our workplace, about things that are not going right? And how often are we looking at our participation in making things right? So I hope everybody got that question. We have to reflect on this today and see, maybe you can write down at the end of the day in a journal, how many times in the day we complained about something or spoke about problems? And how many times in the day did we think about or look at our participation in solving the issues? 
So we'll focus on that today and we'll take your sharings and observations tomorrow 